Hey everyone, I'm Liz Ferry, and today I'm going to show you how I made these cute bat appliques for Halloween. Some things you'll need for this tutorial are a crochet hook, I'm using a size E, a pair of scissors, you'll need some yarn. In this video, I'm going to be using Mushroom from Red Heart Super Saver for the main body color, and I'll use Blush from Loops and Threads Charisma Yarn for the ears and wings color. You'll also need some stitch markers or bobby pins, a yarn needle, a sewing needle, and thread that matches the main body color. I used yellow seed beads for the eyes. If you're making this for a child under 5, I wouldn't use seed beads though, I would just embroider on the eyes instead. And speaking of embroidery, I'm going to be using some white embroidery floss to create the teeth. I also made this really cute black and purple bat, so you can customize the colors in any way that you choose. If you'd like, you can find the pattern for this project in my Ravelry store at the link in the description below in case you want to make your own. To begin, I'm going to create a magic circle with six stitches of single crochet using my brown yarn, and to make the nose a different color, I'm going to use a little bit of my pink. So I'm going to begin by making my magic circle, then into the circle I'm going to single crochet two times using my brown yarn, then a chain one to count as the first stitch, and then I'm going to single crochet one more using brown, and I'm going to change colors to pink for my next stitch, but I'm not going to change colors the normal way. To normally change colors, you would pull up a loop and then finish with a loop of the new color, but I'm going to try to get my stitch to be shaped like a little heart. And in order to do that, I need to finish this stitch with the same old color, and then I pull up a loop into the magic circle using my new color. So I'm going to grab my pink. Then I'm going to use my pink to pull up a loop in the magic circle using the pink yarn. Now I'm going to change back to my brown yarn by pulling a loop of the brown through the loop of pink that I just pulled up. Now I'm just going to leave the pink here for now because I'm going to use it again later when I'm making my inner ears, but that's it for making the nose. And once I close the magic circle, this little pink loop is going to turn into a little heart shape. Now I'm going to single crochet three more times into the circle and then I'll close my circle. So now I have my six stitches and my one loop of pink. So now I'm going to close my circle. I'm going to pull on the tail a little bit until I have a bigger loop and a smaller loop. Then I'm going to pull the smaller loop from the side closest to the tail until the bigger loop closes completely. Now I just have one big loop, so I'm going to pull on my tail until that loop closes. So that's going to make our little heart-shaped nose at the center of the face. Now I'm going to increase every stitch to make the face a little bit bigger. So single crochet two times into each stitch. So I finished my row of increase. Now I'm going to pull open my loop of brown, and I'm going to continue to work using my brown yarn in a moment. But first, I'm going to make the inner ears using the pink yarn. So I'm going to pull up a loop of my pink into the second stitch of the row. So the stitch right after where I placed my bobby pin as my stitch, mark as my stitch marker. I'm going to pull up a loop of the pink yarn. Then I'm going to chain one. Then into the same stitch, I'm going to double crochet two times.
Then I'm going to chain one. And then I'll slip stitch into the same stitch. Now I'm going to cut off a really long tail so that I can use this same yarn to do the other inner ear. So I'm going to pull that whole piece of yarn through to fasten my stitches and pull it tight. Then I'm going to pull it back through the same stitch of my brown stitches to pull the pink yarn back to the back of the work. So I'm going to do the same thing into the other side to make the other inner ear. This time I'm going to work into the 11th stitch of the row, so the stitch before the last stitch of the row. So I'm going to pull a loop of my pink yarn into that stitch. Then chain one. And double crochet two times into the same stitch. Then I'm going to chain one and slip stitch into the same stitch. Once again, I'm going to pull the yarn through to fasten the stitches. And then pull it back through the same stitch to the back of the work. And here's what we have so far. Now I'm going to take up my brown yarn again. And I'm going to do a row of slip stitches into every stitch, including into every loop around the inner ears that I just made. So slip stitch into the first two stitches of the row, including into the stitch that I worked into when making the inner ear. Mark my first stitch. And now I'm going to slip stitch into all of the stitches of the inner ear into just the back loops. So first I'm going to slip stitch into the first two stitches of the inner ear. Then I'm going to chain two. And now slip stitch into the last three stitches of the inner ear. Now I'm going to slip stitch again into the same stitch that I worked the ear into. And now I'm going to continue to slip stitch into the stitches around the rest of the head. So I'm going to slip stitch into the next nine stitches, finishing on the same stitch that I worked the second inner ear onto. Now I'm going to do the same thing that I did on the other ear, except this time I'm going to mirror my stitches. So I'm going to slip stitch into the first three stitches of the inner ear this time, again into the back loops. Then chain two. And then slip stitch into the last two stitches of the inner ear. 
Then I'll slip stitch once again into the same stitch that the inner ear is worked into. And then slip stitch into the last stitch of the row. Now to finish the row, I'm going to slip stitch to the first stitch. And I'm going to cut off my yarn. And once again, I'll pull the tail to the back of the work. And then I'm going to sew in all the ends. So I finished sewing in all my ends, and here is what it looks like so far. Now I'm going to start to make the body. I'm going to begin by chaining 9, and then I'm going to slip stitch onto the bottom stitches of the head to attach the body to the head. I'm going to work onto the stitches behind this row of slip stitches that I made in the last row of the head. So into this stitch right here, just so that it looks a little bit cleaner and ends up behind all of the slip stitches. So I'm going to begin with a chain 9. Then I'm going to slip stitch into the stitch right at the middle of the bottom of the head. And I'm going to put my hook behind that row of slip stitches into the top of the stitch and slip stitch into that stitch. Now I'll slip stitch into the next stitch. So here's what I have so far. Now I'm going to turn the work and I'm going to single crochet into the third chain from the hook. So into this chain right here. I'm going to single crochet into that chain. I'm going to mark that as the first stitch. And now I'm going to create taller and taller stitches until I get to the middle of the body. Half double crochet into the next stitch. Then in the next stitch, I'll double crochet. And in the next stitch, I'm going to treble crochet, but I'm going to treble crochet three times into the same stitch. So I'm going to yarn over twice. And then treble crochet three times into that stitch. Now I'm going to create progressively shorter stitches until I get to the end of the chain. So double crochet into the next stitch. Then half double crochet into the next stitch. Then single crochet into the next stitch. And now into the last two chains, I'm going to slip stitch.
Now I'm going to chain two to get to the other side. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, but this time I'm going to mirror the stitches. So into the first two chains, I'll slip stitch. Then single crochet into the next chain. Then half double crochet. And then double crochet. And now I'll treble crochet three times into the next stitch. Now I'll double crochet into the next chain, half double crochet into the next, and single crochet into the last chain. Now I'm going to slip stitch into the next stitch of the head, again behind this row of slip stitches, so I'm not going to work into the slip stitch row, I'm instead going to work into these stitches at the back behind the row of slip stitches. And that doesn't count as a stitch, that's just going to be to attach the body to the head. So now I'm going to turn the work and slip stitch into the second chain from the hook. So, into this stitch right here. And now I'm going to continue to slip stitch into each stitch, but when I get to the bottom around here on each side, I'm going to make a leg. So first I'm going to slip stitch into the next seven stitches. Next I'll make the first leg. I'm going to chain five. and then slip stitch to the third chain from the hook, and slip stitch again into the next chain. I'm going to skip that last chain, and slip stitch right into the next stitch of the body. That's going to make the leg kind of point downwards. Now I'm going to continue around the body, I'm going to slip stitch into the next three stitches. Then here at the bottom of the tail, I'm going to make a pico. I'm going to chain three and then slip stitch into the third chain from the hook. Now I'm going to mirror the same thing on the opposite side, so I'm going to slip stitch into the next four stitches. Here I'm going to make the leg, so I'll chain four, then slip stitch into the third chain from the hook and into the next chain. Then I'm going to chain one and slip stitch into the next stitch of the body. Now I'm going to slip stitch into the next seven stitches to finish this row. Now to end the row, I'm going to slip stitch into the same stitch on the head where I started. And I'm going to cut off my yarn. Once again, I'll bring this tail to the back of the work. And then I'm going to sew in my ends. So here's what we have so far. Next I need to make the wings. I just used the exact same design wings that I made in my Dragon Amigurumi video. So if you want to see how I made those wings, I'll leave a link to those in the description. One thing I did do differently this time was that I added one more row of the pink 
after I was finished making the wing to make that extra little flap of skin that attaches to the body. So I'm going to pull up a loop in the bottom most row of the wing into the first half double crochet that I made after the pico. So into this stitch right here, I'm going to pull up a loop using my pink yarn. And you can see I just left the pink yarn still attached at the bottom here. And I'm going to wrap my loops around the hook and also around this little bit of the tail that's showing just to hide it away as I work. So I'm going to do six double treble crochets into the base of the wing right here where the bottom of my yarn is coming out from right in this stitch here. So I'm going to yarn over three times except I'm also going to wrap my yarn overs around this little pink tail just to hide it as I go. So I'm going to pull up a loop around the tail then yarn over, then pull up another loop around the tail, and there's my three loops. Then I'm going to pull up a loop at the base of the wing. And now I'm just going to do a double treble crochet. And that sort of just works the yarn around that little tail just to hide it away, and I don't have to sew in another extra end. Now I'm just going to do five more double trebles into that same stitch. And that's what that looks like. So now I'm just going to chain one to end of the row. And I'm going to cut off a long tail so that I can use this to sew on the pink part of the wing. And now I just need to make one more wing for the other side. Another thing I would recommend if you want the other wing to look more similar to the first one is that whenever you do a slip stitch on the other wing, slip stitch from the back of the work instead of from the front and that will put all of the slip stitches onto the other side which um when doing the other wing the back is the front so if you want them to look a little bit more consistent you can do that it doesn't really make that much of a difference it's not that noticeable on the final piece so if you want you could just not bother but again just make sure that anytime you do a slip stitch, you're working it in from the back of the stitch instead of from the front, and that should put all the slip stitches onto the back, which for the other wing will be the front. You could also try to work the entire stitch backwards if you want, but I feel like that's kind of overkill and doesn't make that big of a difference to the appearance of the stitches. The only one that really makes a big difference is the slip stitches. So just to give you an idea, this is what it looks like from the back when you slip stitch into the back, and this is what it looks like when you just slip stitch into the front and use that back side as the front. But if I turn this around, you can see that the slip stitches being on the front makes them look a lot more symmetrical. Now I just need to add my little extra pink section to the other wing. Now I just need to sew the wings onto the body.
Next I used some matching thread to sew my yellow seed beads onto the eyes. First I positioned them in place with some pins. It's surprisingly difficult to get them perfect, so I would recommend trying to place them with pins before trying to just wing it and sew them on just like that, because you might get some weird spacing issues with the distance of the beads from the nose. So I just went ahead and sewed a couple of stitches through the bead to fasten each eye in place. And then I embroidered on the teeth. This is again something that is surprisingly difficult to get perfect. I didn't mark it with a pin or anything, but you could try doing that. I just made sure that I had the rough placement of each tooth where I wanted it to be and just did one single stitch of the tooth before continuing, and I did three stitches each for each tooth. And that is pretty much it. Our little bat applique is done. As I said earlier, I did make two of these. One in black and purple and one in brown and pink. And I think they're both really, really cute. You could also try doing white and pink or a couple of different shades of brown or black and charcoal. There's a lot of different ways that you could do this to make it look really cute. Let me know which of these two bats was your favorite in the comments section. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, press the like button and share it on social media. If you want to support the channel, you can join my Patreon at patreon.com slash fairyrings. You can find a link to my Patreon in the video description. You can also follow me or tag me on Instagram to show me what you're working on. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, subscribe to my channel and click the bell to receive notifications every time I post a new video. Let me know some other spooky themed appliques that you'd like to see me make in the comments section, and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye!